Affairs Committee and a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. So where is your optimismometer this morning, Senator? Do you think that there could be better days ahead, specifically for cooperation between left and right and actually getting some things done for American families? Well, good morning, Chris. Well, first of all, I think it was a very aspirational speech, and it was certainly a, a very strong attempt, a very, I think a very heartfelt attempt to start unifying this country, so I am optimistic. Okay. Now, America faces enormous challenges, but we're a great country. We have wonderful people. There are things that unify us. Uh, for example, uh, celebrating and showing our appreciation to the wife of a fallen hero. Uh, we, we, all, we all want a safe, prosperous, secure America. So I think what, what President Trump did is he tried to point to those areas of agreement and reach out a hand. Hopefully the Democrats will... will uh, you know, grasp that hand and work with us to start solving these enormous challenges. You know, you guys in Congress always stand up and applaud rightly when we have uh, those who have sacrificed and their families from the military at those speeches. The question becomes, do you follow through and take care of them? Uh, even that widow last night, uh, Owen's widow, the services she needs, the support she needs, the health care kids are going to need, and the benefits, will you be there for that? So we'll keep an eye on that. Immigration was a big theme last night. Um, the fact basis of the president, I want your take on it, lawless chaos. You know, Senator, that immigration, immigrants in this country, even Ill illegal ones, undocumented ones, do not commit crimes at the rate that the rest of the citizenry do. Lawless chaos. Fair appraisal? Well, first of all, Chris, I'm not sure what your point is. We obviously do have cases. We're going to hold a hearing today where Americans have been murdered by people in this country illegally. Now, the Americans are murdered by American citizens as well. I get that point. But the fact is, we need to solve our illegal immigration problem. The first step is securing our borders and enforcing our laws. Mm -hmm. And then, certainly what the president was talking, apparently, to the broadcasters yesterday is, once we've secured that border, once we start enforcing our laws, we can take a look at our laws and treat the people here that are working in their communities, not cr committing crimes, treat those people with real humanity, provide some kind of status for them, I'm all for that. I'm all for a, a robust guest worker program because, first and foremost, that eliminates the number one incentive to come to this country illegally. If you make that a legal process, it's going to be a whole lot easier securing our borders and keeping the bad ones out. And we don't have that revolving door where we've seen time and time again people have been deported repeatedly come to this country. Mm -hmm. They do commit murders, and right. that's something that we have to stop. But I'm saying the reason I'm bringing it up to clarify my point for you is that if you want immigration to be a point of cooperation with Democrats, I think you're going to have to agree on what the fact basis of the reality is. And to say it's lawless chaos just isn't borne out in the statistics. It creates a fear dynamic, and the Democrats resist that. That's why I'm bringing it up. I understand. You know, I'm, I'm a business guy. I'm an accountant. I like facts. I like numbers. Uh, for example, the Bush administration deported about 10 million people. The, the Obama administration about 5 million. But what Bush really did is he really concentrated on returning people as soon as they came in this country legal, send them right back. What President Obama did is let him come to this country and then go through the very laborious process of, you know, the deportation hearings and removals. And there's a way of doing this, and that's exactly, I think, what uh, General Kelly's going to be doing is set up the operations at the border and return people swiftly so that we send the signal to other countries that we are not going to have open borders any longer. And that'll, that'll end that incentive to come to this country legally as well. Well, the Republicans have it both ways with the numbers, right? Some of you say that Obama was like the deporter in chief, so why don't the Democrats want to the deport now? Well, it depends on how you calculate it, right? When you factor no, in the, the, who's these, turned these away the at the points of entry, then Obama winds up being the biggest deporter. I don't think it's a meaningful distinction. I think what you do going forward will be how you're judged. Uh, and on that basis, what about the idea of increasing legal immigration, therefore disincentivizing illegal immigration? Well, when I talk about a guest worker program, I'm making sure that we can match the, the occupations that, quite honestly, people are having a hard time filling. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, we, we have dairy farmers. First thing I learned right when I started campaigning in 2010 by the dairy farmers is we need our migrant workers. We're having a very difficult time finding people to milk our cows. I think the same thing can be said in, all, in a host of different industries. So you want to make sure you have a careful balance. We don't want to have an, a legal immigration system that depresses wages. It's one of the reasons I'm actually for prevailing wage rates for a legal immigration guest worker pro process. You know, when we had the Bracera program, we didn't have a problem of illegal people in this country. We had circularity of, of immigration. We need to get back to that legal process, and I think that's exactly what this administration wants to do. But it starts with securing our border and enforcing our current immigration laws and in the incentives 
for people to come into this country illegally, and the incentives, for example, of families from Central America sending their children on an incredibly dangerous journey. Some of them don't make them. Some of them are assault, sexually assaulted. We have to end those incentives so we can uh, start it beginning a legal process that actually works for this country and for American workers. Quickly, when do you think we're going to see a plan for replacement of the ACA? Well, it's, it's a difficult process, Chris. You realize that. I mean, seven years ago, we had about a 380,000-word law. Now, seven years later, it's been imp implemented 20 million words of regulation, infiltrating every nook and cranny of our health insurance and health care delivery system. There's been a lot of damage done. Premiums have skyrocketed. I've, I've got a young mom in Wisconsin. Uh, had, to, had to quit her part-time job mm -hmm. so she could afford her $8,000 per year premium increase. Now she's spending a lot of time away from her kids. So we don't hear those stories enough. So there's been a lot of damage. We need to repair that damage. We need to stabilize the insurance markets. We, right. we need to stabilize the insurance markets so they can price them for 2018. So this is a very complex process. It's, it's, I'm, I'm right. sorry, it's not quite so simple as, a, as a one well, stroke with a pen. We're going to solve all these issues. But, but just three quick points. One. You said you'd do it fast, which is why people are expecting well, it fast. I, I, Two, never, I never did. I well, never did, Chris. The when I said repair the, the damage, did. transition to a process and a system that actually works. Right. Uh, but, and also, you know, the idea of the ACA is a disaster. It's a disaster. That really is a very selective looking at the facts. You said you're a numbers guy. There's no question premiums have popped for some people, but you're looking at about 1.3 to 1.7 million families, and that's way too many. But you have other... Uh, metrics you can look at that show millions more covered and that the rate of increase of premiums and cost of health care is less than it was in the prior administration. So it's more of a relative assessment which drives the criticism. Do you have to throw it all out to make it better? Well, first of all, we didn't need a, a federal government one-size-fits-all solution to take care of those people that we all want to help. We didn't need that. And because we have this one-size-fits-all system, we have done a lot of damage. We have disrupted the individual market. We have caused those rates to skyrocket. We, we did cause people to lose their health coverage. Remember those promises. If you like your health care plan, you can keep it. That was a lie. You like your doctor, you can keep it. That also was a lie. So we didn't have to do so much damage to our health provider market or our health insurance market to cover those people. So we need to transition to a system that actually work, that will restrain costs, provide better quality and better access. Right. That's the new promise, is that you'll get as many or more people covered and it'll be cheaper. We'll see. Senator, appreciate you making the case, as always, on New Day. Have a great morning. You too, sir. We should note. Uh, the vice president, Mike Pence, is making the rounds this morning. He's doing all the shows, but not this one. We invited the vice president on New Day. We invite the president on a regular basis. We know he watches the show. He's welcome to be.